Hello everyone, Rare Modern Reviews here, and today I'll be unboxing yet another RE100 kit here. So, I'm not sure what's going on, but I don't know where the phone is going to get quite a few of these things back in stock. I can't really say I'm complaining, as I've been wanting a lot of these things for some time now. So, the next kit here that I'll be adding to my collection is going to be the RE100 Vig Nagina. So, for those who do not know, this kit came out... 2018, which is around the time the F90 2.0 came out, the RE100 line was a bit of a companion line to the Master Grades, as there was quite a few kits that ended up releasing side by side the Master Grades. So basically, they didn't quite have enough money to put out a Master Grade Vic Nagina, so they made a bit of a budget version of it in the same scale to again go along with the F91 here. So very cool artwork. This is them finding one of the frontiers. They have a Jagan in the background. Probably should be like a heavy gun. I can't really recall too many Jagans fighting side by side these two, but again, still very cool nonetheless. So we of course have some of the artwork going around here. Some of these things here are actually translated to English. So I guess 2018 was actually around the year when they finally started to translate stuff in English around the um, box. I forget which kit was the first one to ever do this. I feel like it was the Master Grade Barbatox, but I could be wrong. Yeah, because everything I'm looking at here appears to be in English. I'm trying to figure out if any of the original RE100s at least uh, translate that thing. The little capture you see in front of the box where it's telling you that it was um, this line is made to, again, be a companion line to the Master Grades. But I'm hoping that this thing doesn't have too many stickers especially for the purple parts uh for those of you who do not know i actually have the no grade vic Nagina that came out around the time the movie itself did decades ago uh but that thing was a piece of crap just like everything from that line just about every single kid i have from that line has fell, fallen apart uh i probably have two kits from that line that aren't complete garbage and Ironically, one of them I dropped so much, it ended up breaking into pieces on me, and I've had to glue it multiple times. So. And it sucks too, because it fell on me one last time, just before I was getting around to reviewing it, so now I, I'd have to try to glue it together again to see if I get a review out of it. But moving on along, we're going to go ahead and take a look inside the box here. So our first run here contains some clear parts for both the shear and the beam saber, and seeing as they're both one, one unique Runner here, one of these are going to be unique looking beam savers, so I'll find out later on. They look to be the typical SB runner beam savers you find on a lot of these kits. So we have a sticker stud decal sheet here for the Vignagina. Now, straight off the bat, the first thing I notice is that the crossbone vanguard symbol that's usually this thing's forehead is right here. So that is most likely if you want to either have Cecily be part of the crossbone vanguard or the uh, federation as she ended up defecting at the end of uh, F91. Have some great parts here. Now, these aren't that same silver that I had on the no grade. I say my vegan again is in decent enough shape where I might honestly break it out for the review to compare them. So, uh, <laughs> potentially look forward to that. And thank goodness this thing actually uses purple parts. Because again, if I didn't say so before, the no grade did not use any purple parts. It was just all silver and gray. And they had some purple stickers that you would slap around for the wings and whatnot. And they did not look good at all. <laughs> Nor did they stick. So, I'm honestly kind of glad they just went ahead and used gray for this thing. As I honestly hate that little cheap silver they tend to use for a lot of these uh, models. They never look good. <laughs> only silver I've seen they use on any model really is like the stuff that they use for the Verka Zeta Gundams. That silver looks good, but everything else, no. <laughs> Don't bother. So I can't wait to slap this thing together. See how it looks. Got a nice clear blue part here for the camera. And this is another thing that this has above the no grade. The no grade did not give the Vic Nagina its hyper, I'm sorry, its beam launcher. So it's very cool to see that they gave the Vic Nagina its beam launcher here. Now, this thing does use some poly caps, it looks like, but I'm hoping this is around a time where the RE series starts to kind of get itself together 
and stop making these crappy, basically giant high grades that can't even stand up. I can't confirm from the box. This is number nine. And think about the, the RE line, which is half the reason why I feel like it failed, is the fact that they 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 had no quality they had no quality control with this line. Basically, it felt like they had a bunch of teams that made these kits, and some of them ended up good, some of them ended up bad. It all kind of varied, you know, like. I think the bow was the second. That was a good one. The first one was the nightingale. Oh, I believe that one was basically just a brick, you know, and it just kind of went back and forth. Good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. Till finally they started trying to get together, but it was too late at that point. The Bandai couldn't justify keeping the liner around. And the Shokyu, a P Bandai exclusive at that was the last one we ever seen from that line. And now uh, I'm still trying to figure out if the full mechanic line was a success. We haven't seen one of those since the, uh, what was it? The, Calamity was it? Calamity or no, the Forbidden. I believe the Forbidden was the last one. Calamity's the first, actually. <laughs> so, moving on along, we're getting inside the manual, of course. This being a bit more of a modern kit. All the constructions here is laid out just about the way you'd expect it to. Speaking of which, no, it did have a beam saber. It was just like, um, I think it was one big clear pink piece or something like that. The uh, brittle at that because it was like, it was the beam sabers back then were like hard plastic. It was strange. It was like the same kind of material that. They use for like the uh, clear mono eyes and whatnot, so I'm thinking it breaking in half. <laughs> so old kits like that are why they start to use just the uh, uh, what was it the rubbery not rubbery the soft plastic that we see now. So this has like a little cockpit hatch there. I don't think that's gonna move at all because this is a RE100. So that of course is one of the things that they cheap out on with. Uh, these not quite master grade lines. There we go. The paper stuck together. I've never had that happen, I don't think. <laughs> so, interesting enough, some of these constructions actually kind of ring a bell. Like the way this wire here, that kind of looks a little reminiscent to the way the no grade had it. I don't think it had anything sandwiched on top of them, but I could be wrong. It's been literally like over 10 years since I built that no grade. <laughs> It's very interesting the way they have the arms put on here. They want you to put the arms upwards and then slide them down. I think that's probably a good thing. I guess that means the arms are some sort of elaborate mechanic here. So that'll make sure that no nonsense happens with them. Also love the fact they're attached with a rivet. I'm trying to see here what poly caps were used for this thing. It looks like mostly for the insides of it, not so much for the um like the joints, like the elbows. So Usually with poly caps, as long as they don't appear around like the joints, like the knees, elbows, stuff like that, they're fine. And I have to see the body. I think I'm gonna, we might have already looked at the body. Oh, here we go. Perfect. So let's see here. I don't see any rivets for attaching the legs, but I don't think the legs should be too much of an issue. The legs don't look too heavy or anything like that where them being attached by a poly cap like that should cause any main issues. I personally think the Victor should be fine, just due to the fact that the Victor Gina isn't a very complicated design. About the comp most complicated thing on the Victor Gina appears to be the wings, which unlike the middle grade, they look to move individually. So that's, again, cool. As with anything with wings, you want those wings to be able to have a wider range of movement, as there's a lot of different poses you'd be able to pull off just by the wings being able to articulate separately. So yeah, this is a C SB119. So I'm gonna assume that this is a generic beam saver. They've been throwing a massive grace for decades now. This thing, of course, has an action-based attachment point. So I'm not sure how much this thing's gonna be able to articulate, but honestly, all I want is for this thing to be sturdy. As long as this thing is sturdy and doesn't flop around, fall apart on me, this thing's a winner and it'll look just fine next to my F92.0, which I need to get around the building. <laughs> I do have the original F90, but unfortunately, that thing was so brittle. It's a great kit. It's just the only thing I can really knock against that thing is it being brittle. So that is going to be it for this unboxing. I do not have a second kit coming anytime soon. So 
package this thing up with, hence why this is just the Vic Nagina being unboxed. And I didn't say so before, but this did come from the USA Gundam store, which should be a no-brainer of any of you who've watched more than one of my unboxings. But as per stated with the USA Gundam store, it always has some inserts, so we have yet another Gundam sticker here. So this is going to go ahead and end up right here on my desk. Well, not exactly right here, but somewhere around with these other guys. We have Rowan here, who unboxed my stuff last week, I believe. So this has got to be the same manifest as last week, since I got that lizard here. Yeah, this is the exact same, so I'm not going to go on any further with the little manifest catalog whatever you want to call that so as percent thank you guys so much for watching i've got about a half a dozen kits on my desk right now in line to build so once those are done i might honestly end up building this and then the f90 2.0 i don't know for those of you who do not know f90 is my favorite <laughs> um gundam and serious or if not my favorite one of my favorites so i have a uh big place in my heart for the F90 line and I mean this kit came out about six years ago so I don't want to hold my breath on them potentially doing any other stuff from the F90 but I definitely love for them to do some crossbone kits especially like the actual crossbone Vanguard like some grunts and stuff from them as I feel like there's like a lot of the late UC designs that are super cool that they don't really do so with the uh the Vic Nagina yeah and F90 being some of my favorites it just warms my heart thinking that there is a possibility we could see stuff like this um, eventually. So let's try to keep this under 15 minutes. Thank you guys all so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video, unboxing, or review.